it expands your consciousness. So you see these pictures and then you start, have to start like engaging with the pictures. The pictures don't really predict your future. They engage you. They show you maybe what's actually in your like energy spheres right now. You know, sometimes we don't want to see. <laughs> big question is this, how do we take a seemingly ordinary world and make it beyond extraordinary? In yoga, there is so much more than meets the eye, and it's not just the things we do on our yoga mats that make the biggest difference. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Austin Bitsis, and welcome to Life as a Secret Yogi. So today's guest is Kasha, a professional astrologer and tarot card reader. Kasha, welcome to the Life as a Secret Yogi show as we hear your life as a secret yogi. Hello, Austin. Hi, nice to have I nice to be here. Awesome. Yeah. And um, so for everyone who doesn't know Kasha, um, as I mentioned, she is a professional astrologer and tarot card reader. She can be found on Instagram at tarot map and Kasha also has some awesome videos and a show of her own on her YouTube channel, Tarot Map. So definitely check that out. That will be in the, sh- the show notes. And that helped me actually prepare for this interview. So her mission is to provide everyone with empowering, inspirational, and honest readings, and to educate people about the safe use of tarot and astrology, breaking that stigma attached to these amazing disciplines, which is what we're going to talk about in more detail shortly on this episode. And we're also going to talk about how they can help us better know ourselves. So Casa has been a student of astrology since 2005, studying under many well-known astrologers as for, and as for Tarot, she got her first Tarot deck back in 1998. But in 2014, she decided to do what she loved and started giving professional readings. Overall, Kasha was a pleasure to speak to the last time we spoke, and I could tell she was genuine and authentic in her message and really passionate for what she does. So Kasha, I'm super excited to have you on the show today. But before we dive in a little bit about Um, our audience today. So our audience are those who want to take the practice of yoga, meditation, breath work, energy work, and animal assisted therapy, among other related tools such as astrology and tarot into the real world. It's a lot of people who are looking to perform at a higher level in other disciplines. May that be running, golf, surfing, weightlifting, freediving, basketball, art, music, entrepreneurship, or so on, or simply those who just want to Um, make life beautiful. The audience does not necessarily have the desire to become the stereotypical yogi or yoga teacher. Uh, Nevertheless, the audience would like to utilize the tools of yoga, meditation, and other related practices like these to make life beautiful. And in short, this message of the secret yogi is that we all have this heroic self, our inner source that we cultivate through the tools of yoga, meditation, breath work, animal assisted therapy, um, and these other related practices like astrology and tarot to make a seemingly ordinary world extraordinary. It's that we all have this superhero that lives within and these tools like astrology and tarot allow us to tap into our quote, quote, superpowers. Our superpowers being mindfulness, um, awareness, love, focus, and creating happiness from within to list just a few and ultimately feel good in a body that we love. So we really hope this episode helps you unlock your own superpowers through these tools. And if you like it, make sure to share it with at least one person that needs it most. And please leave a written review and rating wherever you're listening. So I know that it's kind of generalizing the show audience. And this is a discussion we had before, like who is the audience that's listening? So the audience that's listening is really centered around someone like myself. So, I mean, the average audience, of course, there's a range. However, it's somebody who has maybe um, heard of astrology, heard of tarot, maybe even gotten a few readings in the past like myself. However, is somebody who still maybe doesn't fully understand what those readings meant and what kind of the purpose is of those readings was to kind of take it into the real world and have like actionable steps therefore after. 
So it's a lot of people that are maybe familiar with like, oh yeah, I know what astrology is. I know what tarot is. I've got it done before. But I think this episode will really help them demystify and clarify what the real purpose is. Um, so does that kind of help clarify it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, they're, they're definitely no experts at all. And that's kind of where I'm coming from too, besides my, my readings in the past and um, preparation for this interview. Um, and the last time we spoke, that's kind of my understanding of it. And I'm coming from more of a journalistic point of view. Yeah. Um, because I, I would like to learn more about it. And I know it's a useful tool that so many people use. And it's not just yoga and meditation that help. There's other tools out there like astrology, like tarot, that can really help you uh, better understand yourselves and really make a seemingly ordinary world extraordinary. So, um, But let's begin a little bit with your story to finding tarot and astrology, and then ultimately deciding to really share that message for what you're doing now. So I'm Polish. You probably can hear it from my accent. Uh, But um, so I'm kind of a child of a communism. You know, I was brought up in the communism. And um, well, we didn't have any of those shiny, beautiful bookshops with, you know, a lot of tarot decks and um, or books or or anything really that kind of colorful. And at some point I studied um, German at university. And I left after my third year for a year break. I took a year, you know, a year off from my studies and went to Germany. And that was my first kind of um, clash with this amazingness of bookshops. As you can probably, as most Americans, you can imagine, you probably had it from childhood. So I, you know, I'm like walked into those bookshops and they had like everything. Yeah, so I'm in Germany, you know, hanging out in those bookshops and I was always drawn to esoteric section, tarot. It was internal interest from the get-go. So I never really knew much about it, but it was just something that instinctively, like just, wow, this is amazing. I want to know more about this. So I bought my first tarot deck uh, in Germany. And um, since then it was kind of, um, so I kind of started with tarot as my first, you know, initial kind of intro into this like world of, like I call it magic, but it's kind of, you know, to me, tarot and astrology, they like philosophical systems right now, or they like maps. That's why I called myself a tarot map. And um, that was kind of my intro into tarot world. It took years, you know, to kind of get familiar with the system, learn about it. I didn't study in the beginning. I actually studied quite later when it comes to tarot. I was self-taught for most of the time. You know, there's a lot of books. Uh, you can watch videos. There's all this stuff. And you basically learn a lot from experience as well, like and using, using the cards, actually. And then I uh, lived also in Australia at some point in my life. And I bought myself for my... 28th, I think, birthday, a tar- uh, an, an astrology reading. And I went for this astrology reading, like also curious, you know, like I've never had one done before. Uh, and it was amazing. And amazing in a sense that I felt seen, I felt validated, I felt like um, noticed and expanded in some way also, you know, and like understood and by a total stranger, which was like a totally kind of strange experience for me I thought like why like how does she know all this stuff about me you know like how is it possible so I instantly like signed up for courses with her so with astrology my journey was just for like pure amazement of like how how it works I was uh, I'm a little bit like you I'm kind of consider myself also a journalist you know I'm not like the believer for the sense of believing like I want to know like why, how, what for, why do I need it, you know, is it useful, like, is it just like a woo-woo or uh, another, you know, spiritual glamour type of thing, or do I actually, like, can I use these things, right, and can they make me more me, if I, if I can say so. So I studied astrology in depth for years, and if you go into something, like, I think you probably have a similar experience with yoga, And I think maybe the audience will also relate, you know, to whatever they kind of went in and studied or did for a longer time. It's not that you're becoming like a 
master of it suddenly. Like it takes years to develop, to get to know your, how your body reacts, right? How, or how I uh, see the stars, how I can read the planets, how they speak to me. It took years for me of like studying. And what I love about the systems, it's probably again similar to yoga, they multi-layered. So at whatever level you are, you can get some benefits, you know, like if you're beginner in yoga, you still get some benefits, but the more you study, the more you practice, the more you see and the more you understand. And it is kind of like never ending, deepening and, you know, like kind of, it's fascinating. So for me, being a Sagittarius with like Libra moon and Mars in Gemini, I was, I'm just getting bored very quickly. So a lot of things that I thought like, a bit more regular or mainstream and they just didn't keep my interest for a very long time and I'm very philosophical and I'm interested in religious and spiritual kind of aspect of life so tarot and astrology kind of fed you know fed me like this and they just never stop I don't get bored because they're not static they evolve with you so yeah that's kind of maybe my short introduction to how they got me, you know, like hooked in and fascinated by you know, these two disciplines. Yeah, no, it's it's an awesome story. And, and in terms of like, I was just taking a few notes here. It's like, um, first, like you mentioned, like bookstores, and I think like if that was, I remember growing up and like going to Barnes and Noble, and um, that was like something that was like every week I would just hang out with my dad and, and sisters and Barnes and Noble. And that was just like amazing for me. And I loved it. And I imagine like not doing that and then going the first time to a bookstore, I would just be totally like blown away. Um, and, and, it, and you mentioned you could think about the world in a kind of like this magical way. And that's kind of what it is. It's like this seemingly ordinary world. Like we, we look at like the day to day, like, like ordinary, same things, gray, and it's really extraordinary but it's kind of like that mind shift and whatever discipline helps you make that shift. If it's astrology or tarot, or if it's yoga, meditation, or breath work, animal therapy, whatever it is, um, it's an important way to look at it because it's an op it's, it makes life magical. It makes life beautiful. It makes life enjoyable. Um, and then you were starting to talk about like this curious aspect. So, um, I think that's what the word I was looking for when I was trying to explain the audience, it's like, the audience is curious. Like I'm curious. I'm kind of going into these with a lot of journalistic approach and where you mentioned it's like multi-layered. So maybe somebody is just starting in like the first layers of first understanding it for themselves and better understanding themselves through these tools. And then you mentioned it's like multi-layered and I know for myself, and that's what happened kind of for yoga where I was very kind of, um, I don't know a better word to put it, but like an expert for yoga in myself. But then it's like when you go to become a teacher and teach other people, now it's just like there's this whole nother world that you have to learn and this whole nother like layer. And it's this huge jump. That's like I find the biggest jump because now it's like for every single person you're trying to figure out like how can I help them understand it. And uh, it's really interesting. And it's like curiosity is like the huge thing. So um, it's kind of interesting how your story went about and um, kind of your focus on like this uh, religious, spiritual aspect of it, um, which is kind of where a lot of people try to like find themselves like into this more like philosophical look at life to kind of explain uh, what we find unexplainable. But um, in in terms of like the definition of like what is tarot, what is astrology? Um, and then we could kind of dive into like maybe just broadly demystifying what they are not. Um, can we just like clarify from the beginning of the show, like what each one is? So I think probably, um, you know, there's as many tarot readers, as many astrologers, as there are many people. So it's my, okay, it's my definition, just so we know. And uh, to me, as I mentioned, both of these disciplines, tarot and astrology, are actually philosophical systems. Uh, tarot is probably not as old as astrology. Astrology to me seems like it feels like it's as ancient as humanity. Like we were always orienting ourselves with the help of the stars. 
if we have records of it or not, but it's just, it was the only kind of tool we had to like, you know, uh, find ourselves in our reality. And that was helpful. It was a map. And um, at some point, I think ancient times, you know, we were much more connected to the starlight in general because there wasn't as much light, artificial light out there. So um, Tarot um, seems like, to me, Tarot is a map. It's a collection of allegories, collection of images, of stories. We could call it like a book of life. And um, to me, actually... um, tarot deck which consists of 78 cards um, you can find any experience of life depicted in in the cards and we have different systems of tarot within the big tar kind of tarot umbrella so you have you know the traditional tarot de marseille type decks which are much more historical like line cuts you know historical um looking decks and there is this more occultist uh, decks like Ryder with Smith, the most famous deck probably in the world, or Tough Deck, they actually laden with, you know, esoteric knowledge and Golden Dawn principles and just magical and uh, occult knowledge. So again, if you don't know anything about it, you can still read it. But the more you know about it, the deeper you can go. So that's this multi-layering of uh, of those um, those systems. Uh, but very plainly, you know, you have. Tarot actually historically used to be used for playing, for games. Uh, Later on, uh, it actually came probably historically, maybe it grew out of the playing cards, you know, and in medieval Europe, um, in the beginning of 15th century, suddenly you had those um, connection of the playing cards and those triophany, this major arcana, those weird, you know, allegorical images like a death or devil or, you know, um, the, the chariot, the wheel of fortune, they were like so poetic. When you think about it, like 14th, 15th century, you know, like the big, big images and big archetypes. And they were already like starting, you know, circulating uh, in, in the history there of like our human consciousness. So the connection of the tarot and hopefully, you know, there's different theories, but a lot of people also claim that these cards were actually used for storytelling, for like poetical games you know like if you're aristocracy you were sitting and maybe pulling a card and like inventing a poem or you know sharing some form of story with the image so there's many different ways and of course at some point cards started being uh, being used as divination as well because i don't know it just so happened (laughs) and um in some way, the divination part, I think, took over for many years. And um, when I say that I would love to liberate Tarot out of that kind of fearful approach, um, that would probably have to do with um, getting Tarot off or cutting Tarot off from like ESO TV or um, these very basic divinationary practices. I think divination is a beautiful thing. And so I don't want to be black and white because I think in every tarot reading, this magic happens where the border between like the little bit of the future kind of somehow creeps in, you know? So the divination per se, I actually find it fascinating. And I think most of people do. That's why they love to go to tarot readers and astrologers and so on. But this is not the main, at least from my perspective, not the main purpose of uh, what tarot or astrology would do or would be the most helpful with. Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes to definition, yeah, you could just say 78 pieces of art um, and you have 22 major arcana, you have 56 minor arcana, And you have 16, within this 56 cards, you have 16 court cards, so people cards, you know. And you have millions of books on tarot and you have very many theories on how to to use them. But what is amazing about tarot, that for the last, you know, this few centuries, the kind of, there is this, this system that keeps holding strong. So that isn't changing. Tarot itself, it's evolving, you know, we're moving, the, sometimes the meanings are changing a little bit and we're expanding the meaning, suddenly death, it's not necessarily just the end of 
life, some it became transformation, and you know, like it kind of grows with how human consciousness grows. But um, the system itself stays the same, and I find it fascinating. And even as much as I love reading intuitively and using intuition, is always used within both of these uh, systems. In tarot, you know, using your intuition, you still have the structure of the system with which as with yoga or with any other structure once you kind of master the structure you can go beyond the structure but the structure always helps you right so it has this kind of um beautiful evolution then the more you and deeper you go again there's this multi-layering the the more kind of uh, mastery you have around the system but it doesn't limit you it actually helps you transform the system and go beyond that system so with tarot i think tarot is really great to use as a descriptive mirroring tool um, if you want to you know this this art of asking questions like how to what can i it expands your consciousness. So you see these pictures and then you start, have to start like engaging with the pictures. The pictures don't really predict your future. They engage you. They show you maybe what's actually in your like energy spheres right now. You know, sometimes we don't want to see. <laughs> we kind of know because we mostly know what the tarot reader will tell us. But sometimes we don't want to hear that. Sometimes we... You know, we bias, so we choose to not to see. Sometimes we're privileged and we don't need to see. And so um, tarot usually is very reflective. It's a beautiful mirror. But I always say, like, the future is created in the now. So this is the best time to use tarot and to go for a reading when you actually want to do something about it, right? It's not just, oh, okay, she said my boyfriend will come next Wednesday, <laughs> <laughs> and you know you just sit on the sofa and waiting for Andrew to knock on your door like well it's probably not going to happen but yeah it's a just fascinating way to um, creative thinking to engaging your intuition to connecting to the higher self to connecting to different ways rather than just intellectual to make a decision to engage more senses, to be a bit more kind of centered and quieten, you know, quiet down so we can actually make better decisions in life. And it all, of course, depends on your own interest, on your own point of interest. A lot of people would just always want to go to totally predictive reader because that's what they want. They want somebody to make decision for them. <clears throat> and there will be other people and other readers where... You want help with making a decision, but it's you make your own story. Like you are the one who decides, not a piece of card, you know, or an image, right? Even like thinking about it, it just seems a bit stupid, to be honest, to like trust this so much. Like you, the one who decides and you, the one who has the power to create, to maybe turn around, to change, you know, to transform. So I love using tarot in this way. And tarot is, as I said, a bit more descriptive. You know, when you think of like sharing a message with image, it's not when, what time, uh, you know, it's not that exact. It's like oracle. You know, you go to an oracle, you don't get, okay, go to the market on Tuesday at 5 p.m. and turn around, you know, like it's just, you get like, okay, it's going to be a blue day and a white bird will fly through the middle of the road. You know, that's how oracles used to speak. They speak in metaphor. And you've got the magical brain. You've got the magical thinking potential. And, you know, like we have, all of us have that, that intuition for you to decipher the message. And I'm not saying that this is how the tarot reading goes. But if you expect that kind of, you know, numbers for the lotto, like, no, please. Like, I'm not your reader, at least. <laughs> I'm sure there may be some who will give you the numbers. But <laughs> so it's, it's more descriptive. It's more allegorical. It's more like a storyteller. It's more like a poetry. And it's more for you to engage with your own life, with your own creative thinking, with your own, you know, excitement for living. Like, and in tarot, you see everything, all experiences that we can go through because of this multi-layering quality you find this in the pictures. 
an astrology if you want me to go on or do you want to <laughs> no no that's, that's great i think that's a great definition and a great clarification of like demystifying what it is not and i know on your website you have like at the bottom of your about me page you're like um you have that little saying i mean you you, you could you could say you probably know better than myself um yeah i had it i added it because you know i'm i really think that as humanity we lost our sense of humor and we lost our sense of ritual and sense of magic. So I think they go hand in hand. That's why sometimes the devil card in tarot, it's not such a bad card all the time. Sometimes it tells you like, take a piece, you know, like just laugh. Like remember, it's not all, don't be so serious about all of this, you know, it can be all really an illusion and you like feel trapped, but you know, it can be only in your brain as well. So um, all the archetypes in tarot have this different um, double kind of meaning you have this plus and minus you know when you can swim between but on the website i had written that if you want me to change no to predict your future up one million dollars to you know the price of the reading and if you want me to change your life without you doing anything up two million dollars um, to the price of the reading so just to make sure that i really get people who are bit more maybe resonating with how I see the reading, what the reading should provide you with. So I, yeah, I think it's kind of seeps through a lot of people who are drawn a bit more to SOTV uh, type readings, which, you know, everybody to each own. Like, I think there's place for everything in life, right? But yeah. we just have to be selected to whom we would like to work with. And I think then we actually draw these clients towards ourselves. So yeah, yeah. that would be my purpose. <laughs> Yeah. And from what you were speaking about in terms of tarot, it kind of sounds like just another, like, not just another form, but like a, a, yeah, like another form of meditation or like the reason why we use meditation or the reason why we use guided practices like that, the reason why we even use yoga and, um, and all these different practices. And you wrote, uh, you said, um, like the future is created in the now. And these really help you better understand maybe the subconscious thoughts you might be having or um, kind of uh, peeling away the layers of the mind to really get to what you need to do now or maybe realize what's kind of becoming more aware, becoming more mindful of yourself. And there are all these these tools and these are a great visual um, interactive way to be able to do that. And um, I, I'm really happy that we were able to kind of like clarify it because a lot of people, when they think about like tarot or astrology, I mean, even before I started really diving deep into it uh, in preparation of this interview and speaking to yourself, I would have thought it's like, oh, it's kind of like predicting that like almost like a psychic type of thing. And um, yeah, and it's really kind of, wow, it's like this really useful tool that we could utilize. Uh, but yeah, let's dive right into astrology. So yeah, I think astrology compared to tarot is much more, I say, scientific. Like you can give dates of cycles that are specific for you, you know. So in my kind of tarot reading, I use both disciplines, tarot and astrology, because I think they inter like they interact beautifully together and they give really re well-rounded and um practical readings sometimes tarot can be a little bit maybe for um you know some people a bit more sometimes general it depends how deep you go how you know narrow the questions are and so on so there's many different aspects to this but because of this allegorical kind of poetic uh, intuitive type of um interaction with a person tarot can like it's much more descriptive it's much more much more emotional it's much more what do you feel how do you feel about that you know it's kind of gives you pulls you into this beautiful kind of story and astrology is um much more mathematical in this way like you you know your astrological chart is basically like a snapshot of um the moment when you took your first breath if you stood like on the ground and looked up and take a photo of photo of um, you know the skies, and you would know where the planets were. And in this particular moment, it somehow reflects 
and freezes this you know moment of your first breath so it, it's like has a very personal connection and um because of predictability of how the planets and you know the stars are moving like we can really get like pretty um precise if you have precise birth date we can get pretty precise map of what are you going through when are you going to go through it when does it start when does it finish you know what is it about and how can you best prepare for it most of the time consciously or unconsciously we plugged in into this this is like some form of you know that's why i believe in some form of order of the universe because i see it in my clients for years now like it's working you know and um if you do it consciously that's great you have more knowledge when you have more knowledge you can maybe do it better you know or like do it more consciously or like be present more or enjoy it more or you know do something whatever that is that you want to do but we also do a lot of this stuff unconsciously you know until 28 i didn't know anything about astrology and yet i can go back and see oh wow you know i was going through this then and then i could check like into the past like all the cycles which are big the love cycles the money cycles the work cycles you know and it somehow works so we always plug in but i think that's why tarot and astrology are amazing as disciplines for self development for like um self knowledge for self um awareness because like you know so once you know you can do more and you can yeah you can work with this right so it's not sometimes even sometimes even confirmation of what you're going through it's enough to help somebody like if you're going through very tough times or breakups or you know loss of jobs or whatever like hits us you know death of the close ones like you can kind of i mean astrology will never say per se oh someone is dead like you know but you are going through a death cycle so it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you die or somebody close to you die but it can be an ego death it can be a breakup in a relationship it can be loss of home you know any type of kind of ego death that we go through like this transitions and yeah astrology won't say exactly this is going to happen to you this particular thing of it you know but you are going through the cycle so there is no sense of like kicking and screaming and like going no 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 i'm going to hold on to my past now and i'm not you know cuz it doesn't work like you will go through it nevertheless but you can also go through it much more consciously much more aware much more prepared and i think for this reason astrology is amazing when it comes to easing like what we are going through and making us more aware that it has a beginning and it has an end like it's not going to go forever and ever and ever you might be in the middle of the cycle you might be at the beginning it might take another 2 years it might take another 3 years but it's going to end you know and for people sometimes it's 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 a hopeful message or something like wow okay maybe it's not so happy that it's another 1 year or 1 year and a half but it's going to to finish right it is going to end and it gives you power that you can actually do something with it do something with yourself with your own acceptance sometimes accepting things gives you so much power you know sometimes we cannot change things and sometimes life is not just all about us <laughs> it kind of gives you this bigger perspective this like we really a drop in a big net and we all somehow connected and participating in this big flow and when you go deeper with these disciplines which i of course encourage everyone who's listening to do for themselves it's it's just fascinating to watch it to you know watch it on your own life in the beginning then watch it at your friends lives like to see how it's mirroring what's happening in our lives it's amazing mm-hmm. collectively as well yeah no i'm i'm fascinated from what you're how you're kind of framing it and um how you kind of think about it and um yeah or explaining it it's it's really fascinating to me and i want to go deeper myself into it because it's just like um some stuff that you mentioned is like it helps you in your self knowledge your awareness become more conscious of these things that are happening around you um be 
prepared maybe for them. And um, you, like you mentioned, there's a beginning and there's an end to everything. So yeah. um, it allows you to have this, this power and, um, and even do, like you said, like acceptance. And I remember my first time having one, a tarot card reader, I was uh, I was a tarot card reading from a, a professional tarot card reader. And I was just in a, um, like a health fair in my uh, town of, of Jersey city. And we're just walking around with my um, girlfriend and uh, she's like, Oh, we got to do this. And I'm like, I, I never really done this before. Uh, this was like a few years back. And I was kind of like skeptical. I go to things that very like um, scientific mindset. Um, I, I'm pretty much um, oh, very open-minded to things, but at the same time, I, I do go about it as a more of like, Hmm, kind of what's, what, what's like the bigger thing here? Um, like I'm not so easy to accept things, even though I'm open-minded to trying things. So we tried it and I was just blown away. Like, I was just like, Whoa, like this is like in, incredible. And, um, and my girlfriend was there too. And we've never met this lady before. And, um, she, she was like that, like perfectly, like we both said like that, like just perfectly, like clarifies like kind of what I'm going through, kind of what I'm thinking about. And um, yeah, I was just really blown away by it. And then the astrology, I was just kind of, it was as a group class at a, um, it was like a free people clothing store. Um, at the time, my, my girlfriend was working there and um, they were hosting these, these events. And that, that reading, I never done an astrology reading either. And we were, had like our charts, we had to go on the website, like figure out like basically go through the whole process. And again, I was just like really blown away and I'm surprised I didn't go d- dive deeper into it at the time. Uh, I, I didn't have somebody like yourself to kind of explain it, like maybe one layer and kind of demystify it a little bit. And um, yeah, no, it's really in- fascinating. And I hope like the audience right now is like super fascinated about it too, because it's just like, wow, this is like one other tool that we could take and like like we've been explaining, like make a seemingly ordinary world extraordinary. And that's kind of where I want to like take this conversation next is like, okay, how can we integrate this into daily life? Like now this is the tool. We kind of understand the tool. These are the definition. This is the purpose of it. But like, what next? Like, what can we do? Is it just like hire somebody like yourself? Is there someone like, even if you did get a reading, like, then what do you do with it? So can we kind of explain a little bit more about like the process? Um, to yeah. use utilizing these tools so i think there's a few ways i think when it comes to astrology and tarot i would recommend getting a reading uh, for if you don't know anything about these disciplines i think it's you know it's interesting that's kind of how you start to see is it something for me or uh, i would advise you to find a reader that you resonate with and usually you can you, you will know, like we all have this amazing intuition and, you know, the lights go on. Oh, I like how the website looks. I like her YouTube videos. I like how she describes something or her or him, you know. So um, if you go on the website of a few astrologers, you would probably pick the right for yourself. You know, we just have this, doesn't matter if it's a live reading or an internet reading, uh, you, you will know. And I really strongly encourage everybody to trust themselves on this because you will always get a person who is probably right for you at this moment even if you decide oh no that wasn't a very good reading but you probably will learn something you know (laughs) something about it but um i think this is especially for astrology a great way to go deeper because astrology is really complex so with tarot you can still uh, probably be a bit more playful and you can get much more um, out of the tarot deck for yourself, even intuitively, even if you don't know the system. With astrology, it's difficult. You know, you print your chart and you go like, sorry, I'm going to swear. What the fuck, right? You look at it and you go, what is this? It looks, it looks very weird. Like, it looks hard. It's mathematical. It's like all these di- digits and symbols. And so if you don't know, it's really daunting and kind of like... You know, you don't even know where to start. So I think with astrology, it first of all have patience. It takes take it takes a long time, and um, if you just want to start, like there are of course some books you can you know read. You can watch some YouTube videos again. Um, but I think getting a reading is really a good option because usually 
astrologers explain the simple, you know, the simple, um, like basic ideas of what they're talking about. Uh, and they kind of link the language of astrology with the language of humanity. So you can understand without, you know, me saying Jupiter square Mars and you're going, sorry, what did you, what does it mean? Right. So you have to kind of translate this language of astrology into the normal kind of person's understanding. But um, if you think of like, you're going back to your question, um, I can speak for myself. So for example, I use Tyra every day. For me, this is like now part of my spiritual practice. It's part of my meditation. It's part of my um, inspiration. If you go now even to the shops, like you know how many tarot decks there are. It's like masses, like tarot is blossoming for sure. Like it definitely got out into the mainstream. And artists, amazing artists produce like amazing decks. So, you know, I'm kind of fascinated by art and by tarot. Combine the two, I'm in heaven, right? So you, you can inspire yourself via color. You can inspire yourself via image. You can get a deck that you, you know, you love. Like you kind of go, okay, this is not just the only one deck, right? There it's me for only tough or only the esoteric one. If you're not interested in this, there's so many more just plain decks, you know, that have no esoteric kind of meaning added into the cards, no astrology, no all this, you know, tarot for itself, pure form. Um, and I think I would advise everyone to get a tarot deck, like a one that you really like, that speaks to you, that kind of makes you want to touch the cards and, you know, open it up because it's so beautiful, because beauty heals, beauty, like, makes you inspired. So I pull usually a card a day, or in my case, probably a few cards a day from a few different decks because I'm a mixer. I love mixing decks. And because there's so many and I, you know, work with cards. So I always connect tarot cards with oracle cards. Or you can pull one tarot card, one oracle card. You can pull one tarot card as your inspiration for the day. It doesn't have to be anything like, you know, what is this day going to be like? Like you don't want to limit yourself. Like you want to expand your experience of life. So you would pull like, what's the inspiration for today? What, what do I need to like look out for? Or for example, be aware of a little bit, you know, like, so you would go like maybe a bit more on the shadow side of what I might not want to see or what I might need to pay attention to. And then the other cut could be, like, what do I need to exp like embrace more? What do I need to, like, really kind of be excited about, you know? So you can make, like, uh, again, there's so many. You can put, like, three cards spread into Google and it will come up with millions of different options of what the meanings of the three cards could be, you know? But you learn also through using the cards and um, just doing it for yourself without too much of you know this expectation of i need to learn you you have a personal link but because i'm a tarot teacher i'm a tarot reader i always always encourage everybody to learn tarot system if you don't want system go for oracle decks they have no system per se you know but tarot to use tarot because i also hear a lot of people go oh you can just use tarot intuitively you don't have to learn um you know the the meanings or the, the the system and yes of course you can there's like nothing wrong with it nothing will happen devil won't come out of the cupboard and chase you <laughs> like you can do it but there is richness it's like you know of course you can combine different asanas and uh, go oh this is yoga now but there is a whole system behind yoga right like you don't want to just keep the system and in this case i'm always a, like propagate like you read intuitively but learn the system and then transcend beyond the system you know don't make the system limit you because people find it quite difficult to go okay two of pentacles means i have a few choices you know i have to decide i can try this way and this way and then for example they don't know how to go beyond that kind of learned meaning and it takes time to kind of allow yourself to then add your intuitive hits to work with that direct image you see. Sometimes they could be very different two of pentacles, right? One is the more traditional, one can be a dancing lady, one can be, a, I don't know, a dog sitting with a cat. 
So you would work also with the image that you see and you learn to kind of connect the system and the image, your intuition and the knowledge. And it just gives you, as I said, like layers of meanings. So it's, it's amazing like this. And I think what it does to me, how it helps me, it kind of, first of all, like um, you can direct your energy a little bit. You can direct your thinking and you can interact. Sometimes during the day you go like, oh, it's like this card, you know, it's just you're reminded of it somehow. And it makes you go straight away. Okay, what was I supposed to watch out for, you know, because I don't want to kind of, like, I just want to see if I may be unaware of something that I may be, and it, it just like kind of start working in this unison. You kind of, without being too limiting to your flow of the day, you know, you're not constantly walking around and thinking of that card, but it kind of goes and flows and comes in. And it really helps me with ins being like inspired and living a magical kind of life and also looking out for synchronicities. You're a little bit more into your intuition is a bit more open. You're a bit more um, inspired in some way to see the connections between things during your day. You know, you kind of, through using of Tara and astrology, I learned to see differently, to look differently at things, to see connections between things. They're not, like sometimes during the day, we just think like we have the seemingly unconnected events, of, you know, that happen. But when you really try to like look into it and analyze this, most of the things are connected to something in the past or, you know, it's like really kind of, there is a lot of dots that we can connect. And I think using this, uh, especially tarot, like on a daily basis, it's really fascinating like this for me. It just makes my life kind of more magical, more happy, filled with art, filled with, you know, kind of going and training my brain to look at things differently than just through the logical, you know, kind of patriarchal lens that we have. How much did you do from A to Z? You know, there's only one way, only go up. You, you kind of learn to look at things a bit differently. Yeah. Oh, astrology. Yeah, go, go. Oh, but, but yeah, but before we jump into astrology, um, maybe we could run through like one quick example because I love how you explain that. Um, like what card did you pull today, if I may ask? Yeah. I don't know if it's personal to you. Wait, what card was it? Or like Let the other day. Or... No, no, because I think I pulled, uh, I just actually received a new deck today. I pulled nice. six of swords today. So um, I think I only pulled one this morning from the new deck because I wanted to get to know it. So I take it slower then. And the six of swords was um, like a lady standing on the moon with the back to us and looking towards another moon. And there was three swords on one side and three swords on the other side, which were creating like a pavement maybe or like a bridge. So wow. six of swords is an interesting card because swords are connected or I connect them to the air element, which usually are like our thoughts, our communication, um, or like the words, you know, the intellectual kind of ability. So sixes are usually quite harmonious numbers. Like it's usually the number after the five, that comes after the five and five is in the middle of the kind of process from one to 10. So you have a bit of the friction, a bit of the change, a bit of adjustment. And then you arrive in the six, it's a bit more, brings a little bit more breath out, breath in, a bit more harmony. So when I looked at the image, I was actually thinking that maybe there will be some opening. Maybe I will learn something new today. And also, you know, like when she was looking from this image, like from one moon to another, like also and like some other connections that I can make today. And maybe, you know, we're making a connection between you and me, but through swords, that's also a, element of air which is connected to internet so we maybe also can make connections to you know wider amounts of people it's just how you know there would be the one way but you can go on the more spiritual level the six of swords would be also um how do i communicate to create more harmony in my life you know how do i use words how many facts do i say you know how well, how beautiful is my language? Like, how do I create that kind of emotional connection to my language? You can go very basic of like, oh, six of swords can be a journey, you know. I can maybe go to the beach today and swim. So you, you really can, um, you know, take it as deep as you want. Mm -hmm. But I usually would um, 
look at this card and then look for some form of synchronicities that would depict what I know about that card, I would always look at the image of the deck that I'm using at, using at this moment because they're different images and image is really important. And I would definitely take it to the very, very uh, spiritual level, which would be more like my kind of ideal that I probably will never reach, but something that might be just like an inspiration for me to use my language maybe in a better way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's an awesome example. And I know, uh, or at least the, the deck that, um, that I have, or my girlfriend has, it came with a book to kind of explain each of the cards. So when you're kind of learning, you pull it out, you see the card, you see the imagery, which is, is always beautiful, like unique to each deck, like you're saying. And then it's like the book kind of helps you learn and like understand yeah. it a little bit better. Um, and yeah, and most of the tarot decks come with, with a companion book. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really great because, yeah, if you're a total beginner, that's a total help. Like, it's a very great help for you to mm -hmm. understand more of this card. But I would also highly encourage people to, before they go to the book, they just feel, you know, because you, you receive the intuitive me like messages in a very, like in many ways and forms. So sometimes people hear Sometimes people see images, you know, like you get hits of intuition through different channels. Sometimes if you're more kinesthetic, you, you can sense, you know, um, like different sensations in your body. So you can smell, you can have like olfactory even, um, you know, kind of sensations. So um, everybody had to get to know themselves well on how do they the, like we have all of those um, mediums, right? All of those uh, audio, like the clairs they call. We have all the clairs as a human being, but each of us has probably one or two that we instinctively are much more drawn to that are kind of easiest for us. So um, just, yeah, you should pay attention to how do you receive. So don't compare yourself to others. Like, oh, I never see anything. Maybe you hear things or maybe you feel things, you know, it's, it's not the competition in this uh, quality. It's just how do you do it? How do you connect to this intuitive world? Mm -hmm. so awesome. Good thing yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And um, in terms of like astrology, kind of integrating that into the real world, maybe explain your, your process and then the re recommendations for the audience. <laughs> when I was studying, you know, and I was like an astrology freak, I only talked astrology and asked everybody for the time of birth and... I wanted to do everybody's charts and just, like, you know, learn. Well, that was, I think, a little bit too extreme. So I wouldn't probably recommend using astrology like every day for every transit you go through because some transits are really short, you know, like if you think of Mercury or Venus even, like Venus transit is very interesting for, but yeah, it's not an astrology lesson. So I'm not going to go deeper there. But my point is that you don't go crazy. You know, astrology and tarot, they're not therapy, they're therapeutical to use for you, you know. But if you kind of um, go to extreme and you can't make a decision without pulling a tarot card or you can't make a decision without looking at astrology or you kind of feel like you, you know, bound like in the devil to this devil person which astrology and tarot easily can become, that's not the way to go. Like, this is like, you still the, like the, the master of your own life, right? Like you make your own story and tarot gives advice and not predictions the same with astrology. Don't let yourself like fool with it. And also um, I wrote here something that, yeah, like they are just tools, right? And you're the director and never give a tool a deciding kind of uh, um, power or too much power over your life. Like, because this is where I think a lot of the, this, a lot of um, what I'm trying to abolish, you know, those kind of, um, how do you say it in English? Oh my God, I forgot now this word. Like when you think that tarot is evil and like the, like all these kind of um, uh, meanings of tarot and astrology that kind of grew with, uh, uh, filled with fear and with, uh, disability, uh, uh, you know, ability not to make decisions without going to a tarot reader. I think this is where it's coming from when actually you lose your own power. 
of using the tool and treating it as a tool to help you and not to kind of suddenly direct your life. So I think this is really important to, to know because I think um, it's very easy to drop and give away your responsibility for your life and give away the responsibility for, oh, okay, actually I can maybe do something about it or, you know, stop whining and actually <laughs> pull my sleeves up and actually do something, right? Rather than just kind of go out constantly from this victim position and seeing yourself as this like pawn of fates where you poor you can't actually do anything. So I want to really make sure that people know that because I think we like, yeah, powerful beyond what we actually even realize, you know, most of us don't. Mm -hmm. And um, like always leave room for learning new things again, like there's just, just be open towards it, but don't limit yourself. Oh my God, I have like Saturn square Mars. Like it's going to be horrible, you know, because it's, it can be very like, it can, it can get a touch um, dramatic when you follow astrology really closely without actually developing your own ability to be present in the moment, you know, to be mindful, to be aware of who you are, of your limitations, of your gifts. So any of the disciplines that you study, I think astrology, tarot, yoga, it's really, you probably study also other things, like they help you to become more aware of who you are. And you don't become like a, you know, a prisoner of those disciplines. So to answer like, how do I use astrology for myself? I usually use, use it as a map. Like for example, right now, like I'm going through quite intense transits, which again, if I was studying astrology in the beginning, I'd be going, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> you know, these are like full on Pluto is squaring everything in my chart and Pluto is like a lot of underworld and he abducted Persephone, right? Into the dark, dark place under the ground. <laughs> so you just go, Woo! you can easily get, you know, you can easily scare yourself. And this is what I think the proper use of any of these disciplines is like advising you against. Like don't scare yourself. Use those disciplines as like talismans against fear that kind of, you know, we're fearful. We always, as humans, we will be fearful. So astrology is lovely to see what bigger pictures, like what bigger cycles am I in? So let's say now I have this Pluto square moon and Pluto square Venus. And I know that when it comes to these two archetypes, Pluto is a big transformer. Whereas like, let's say Venus and moon is more like more emotional needs, my relationships with women, my own sacred divine feminine kind of side and um, it's transforming. And again, it's so multi-layered, right? Let's say my mom got sick. That was a very kind of physical manifestation of Pluto square moon, moon symbolizing the mother. So that was like one part of it. I could have gotten sick, right? Like I didn't yet, <laughs> but it could be another manifestation of it. Like, but here in this case, my mom got sick and it really reflected. It was directly during this time. But at the same time, when I look at myself from the spiritual perspective and what's happening to me, like I started working with Mother Mary with huge amount of like really sacred divine, divine archetypes from my culture, you know? I'm going through profound transformation of like, who am I as a woman, about my relationships with women, like what do I value um, in, like, in the feminine kind of approach to life? Not even being, you know, feminine, we all know, like, you have the feminine aspect, like, every human being has feminine and masculine side, and how we kind of, you know, mingle and balance this. So it's, you know, and this transit is happening, and it's going to only finish for me, let's say, in end of 2021. So even though, you know, it's not like I'm not thinking about it every day when I wake up, right? But I know that I'm in this bigger cycle, and whatever I do that kind of fits the the metaphor and the allegory of these two planets or more that are involved and the houses that houses which is the areas of life where they you know interact with one a child which one one another like i know that this is part of a bigger cycle for me so i'm not really following all those short ones you know 
Um, people love, like I love working with the moon, like when moon phases, it's a different story, but like, you know, the proper astrological cycles, I look at the big players, like the longer cycles, like what's important in your kind of, you know, an evolution, which takes longer than a week or two. Because otherwise it's just too, like, um, it's like micromanagement, you know, like you yeah. lose touch with the flow. If you like follow every tiny little bit, like it's not for me, not interested. In, in uh, just a quick question, where does horoscope kind of fall into this in, in astrology? When you mean like horoscopes, like in the uh, yeah, like, in, like, like, like a newspaper, newspaper, or you get like the classic thing? Like where does that it's, kind of fall in relation to, to astrology? Because I'm, I'm sure very, like I'm thinking it. So yeah, you know, like the think. horoscope, it's more like playful. It's playful mm-hmm. because it only looks at your sun. It's like a pop star astrology. Um, it's like, you know, finding a symbolical meaning for a sun and making a weekly horoscope of like, oh yeah, uh, you know, whatever the dog pose today will mean that you're flexible, you know, or be flexible this week or whatever, you know, it's like kind of finding the symbolical connections, but it's only looking at your sun Got it. and uh, everybody knows they star sign, right? So if you would do a horoscope based on the moon and ascendant, it would be much more narrow than much more actually maybe more useful. But many people don't know, right? What the ascendant is, what the moon is. So the sun sign, yeah, I wouldn't worry so much about it. You can do it for fun. Some are better than others, but yeah. it's basically very, you know, to call it playful, like entertainment. Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I'm glad to clarify that because I'm sure a lot of other people were thinking of it if I, it kind of popped up into my head. And, um, yeah, so I'm really in, interested in like learning, like, okay, now we understand this is how you use it. Like what resources are out there? I know tarot cards, you just Google, there's tons of different tarot cards. Um, and, but, and then just one step back to what you were saying is in, in clarification to astrology is that like, um, like not giving the power to the tool and kind of treating the tool how it is and not giving away your responsibility of really life and directing your life and you're in power, not the tool. And this kind of brought this idea of like what a lot of um, yogis um, out there and like yoga teachers out there talk about this idea of like non-attachment to yoga and it could easily be this form. And I often find myself in it where it's like, oh, I have to practice yoga at least an hour a day. Like I'm I often find myself attached to it. And it's like, it's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be in control and it's supposed to help you better understand yourself so you could better um, be em- empowered to control your future. Cause the present, like you said, is created in the future and, um, and not become a prisoner to these tools. So I just wanted to like clarify that because I thought it was like a really beautiful point that you kind of put across. Um, but in terms of like resources, like, so is there any specific websites, books, recommendations, any specific videos on YouTube that you may have for somebody who's trying to learn more? Um, yeah, just any, any resources. Well, I, um, it's, it's quite hard to actually do like, you know, give you like, oh, this book is amazing. Or if you just read this one, because it's like, it's not true. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's not possible. But um, I really like as a beginner uh, book, the title is Astrology for the Light Side of the Brain. And it's by Kim Rogers Gallagher. And it's a cool, cool startup book. It explains, you know, the basics of astrology, explains what the signs are, what the planets are, what the houses mean, how to delineate. It gives meanings to, you know, like a beginning kind of starting point, like what the sun in Aries means, what the moon in Aries means, because when you start, like you you want to have at least like a little, you know, uh, introduction. And I've learned like just a lot from my studies. So I studied in Australia. So again, my first astrology teacher doesn't live anymore. Her name was Parampara. Um, Kelly Satis, she's studying a bit more traditional side of astrology now or teaching a more traditional side of astrology, but she's amazing. There's a resource that it's called the um, Astrology University. And they do a lot of different courses and um, seminars and summits and stuff like this. So you can check them out. And on my, uh, on my uh, 
YouTube channel, I have a few talks, but probably it would be more maybe for people who are interested and know a tiny little bit about it already, because I have talks on like Uranus, uh, I have talks on Chiron, which is the wounded healer, because I'm kind of specializing in Chiron readings as well. Um, so you can check on my YouTube channel in uh, probably astrology playlist. There will be a few videos on this stuff. Um, there's also on my YouTube channel a, 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 a kind of talk or a lecture on 2020, which I still encourage you to check out because it's quite interesting and how we can help ourselves to deal through, you know, deal with this year and this intense, intense times we are living in. On Tarot, I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel, study Tarot, and there's a lot of traditional decks, Tarot de Marseille videos, there's some, you know, how to do spreads and stuff like this, even some descriptions of cards, like when I compare, for example, I talk about High Priestess, let's say, and I show cards from many different decks and talk of all these different aspects of what the card can be and can mean. And this is quite interesting for people also to see what decks they like. And I have a lot of reviews of decks as well, so people can check. Uh, I show all the cards always, so you can skip if you don't want to see all of them. But you can, you know, get a feel if you like a deck or if you don't like a deck, if you're thinking of getting a deck for yourself. And um, again, I would really advise people to get a reading, just to experience, like, what it is. And... Um, yeah, I think astrology, I would start with this book. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Also YouTube, you know, YouTube is a yeah, like, YouTube university. <laughs> source, yeah, exactly, source of knowledge. <laughs> so you can listen to many different things and see what you resonate with and, you know, whom you resonate with. So that's, that's pretty cool. Cool. Awesome. And yeah, I mean, and then normally I go into some like audience questions, but it seems like just reading through them right now, like we pretty much hit every single one of them. Um, oh, here's a, here's a good question. Is it true that you shouldn't buy your own tarot deck and it should be gifted? Is that a myth or? Bullshit. Myth. 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 Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to it. No. And you also don't need to have a grandmother who read cards to be a tarot reader as well. So no, let's skip this. And you can use secondhand decks too. So. Cool. All right, good, good, to, good yeah. to clarify because that was actually another one. What's, what, what's another like misconception? Um, so your grandma just, you know, does not have to be a tarot card reader. No, no. It's like your grandfather didn't have to be yogi for you to practice yoga. Yeah. It's oh, yeah, that's just it. that tarot got, you know, that kind of Catholic or kind of religious Mm -hmm. um veto you know no yeah. <laughs> like you can't like so it's it, it's grew with this superstitions like it's not true yeah no um awesome yeah I mean, we we hit every other question surprisingly i had like seven or eight questions from the audience so um and everyone listening right now if you have any questions on like future episodes uh before or even after uh reach out to me um on either instagram at secret underscore yogi or just uh, sign up for a newsletter at www.secretyogisociety.com, which will be in the show notes, and just respond back to that e email that I send every week, usually on Mondays. Um, is there anything else on uh, tarot or astrology that you would like to share with the audience, now knowing the audience a little better, that we may be left out or I didn't specifically ask um, well, I can invite people to take a look at my website. I have like pre-recorded classes, which, um, for example, I have a really great class and creative class on um, use many decks in one reading for oneself, you know, so how to be inspired and how to use more decks in one reading. And it's called Creative Tarot Class. So if you're a person who has, for example, three decks, um, and you want to kind of work with them together, but you're not sure how, this class will definitely help you to, you know, inspire you to get a bit more creative, juice flowing when it comes to this. I have a class on Tarot de Marseille, reading the Tarot de Marseille's Guild for Beginners, and it has a great section of Major Arcana. When explain, I explain a lot about depth and how they connect. Um, and also I think... Uh, you know, just in general, um, I guess YouTube, as I said, it's by, for everybody, not just my channel, but a lot of different videos. And just get inspired. Like, you know, if you love this, if you feel drawn to this, 
like walk into these subjects without fear. Like just be curious, be open-minded, be creative. Don't be afraid to break the rules sometimes, you know, like just try and see what happens, you know, like if it works for you this way or, or that way, because that's what I did. And, you know, I had to really fight a lot and fight in the quotation marks, but, you know, fight a lot of the superstitions being brought up in Poland and living in a very Catholic country. It, it, it just comes with the territory. And then the second one, this kind of SOTV type, you know, it predicts your future and you can't do anything. So it's scary. Oh my God, I had to talk to so many people about it to just educate them that it is not true. It's just purely, it's not true. But the painful thing about it is that you can make it true, right? Because you're the master of it. So yeah, if you want, if you want it to be scary, you definitely can make it scary. So it's really that a lot of this depends on you. And I just encourage you not to buy into that fearful approach and be creative and open about it. Because they're beautiful disciplines and they enrich my life and has been for years now. Awesome. Uh, no, I, I really appreciate that. And you uh, having those those resources out there um, and just like the idea that you just said, like the enriching your life, um, making it beautiful, making it extraordinary. Um, so I really do appreciate that. And um, is there anything else that you're working on? Um, so people could find you at your website. I have it up right here. It's uh, tarotmap.com. That's pretty much everything. So if you just type in tarot map or um, Kasha Tarot and Astrology, you'll find it too. Um, and you're on Instagram, you're on YouTube. Uh, but if you just go to the website, it has links to everything. So definitely check it out because you also have those amazing free resources. Uh, is there anything else that you're working on that you want to kind of share? Well, I'm just going to record more classes. I like it and it works for me. It's also quite a sustainable way to, you know, support myself as well. And the next class I want to do, it's going to be on reading abstract tarot decks because I got a lot of requests from my viewers to like record something about this, you know, because we have a lot of decks which are a bit more, um, uh, clear in their depictions like you have people doing things so it's much easier to connect or read mm -hmm. but then you have a lot of abstract decks which are just like abstract art mm -hmm. how do you read this you know <laughs> like how do you is yeah, this still yeah. tarot so yeah i want to do something about that because i uh, right now i feel passionate about reading those abstract decks and uh, a lot of people were going oh, come on make a class so i'm going to probably do a class about that one but as I said, I have an intuitive tarot workshop as well for people. That's for beginners when I kind of learn, uh, teach people how to read an image in general, not necessarily only made from tarot, but then we go into the tarot as well. But we stay within the system. So I kind of want to be the bridging, you know, have two. So, yeah, I think that classes, more classes will be coming. Cool. Awesome. I, I, yeah, I appreciate that. And everyone's going to like now dive in super deep into it. And it, honestly, if you just go into like the world with like this open mind and this curiosity, there's these awesome tools out there. And speaking to someone like you, like really kind of opens my mind up even further to like these other disciplines out there, um, making this world extraordinary. So Kasha, uh, I really appreciate the time today. I'm really grateful for your time. I'm grateful for that. The internet worked out today um so um if there's a few like skips here and there i apologize to the audience but i really appreciate for everyone that um is listening to this conversation and will listen to it in the future um so i hope this episode opened um your mind to these other modalities besides just yoga and meditation and breath work which are the more common ones we speak about on the show um, there's really these other amazing tools like we've just learned to unlock our inner secret yogi and really unlock um, our superpowers within how we put it on the show. Um, and there's many experts like yourself, Kasha, that um, uh, we're fortunate enough to talk to on this show. And uh, I'm grateful to kind of share your expertise and your um, spiritual practice uh, in your sacred practice. So. Um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I'm, I know the audience does too. Um, so for everyone listening, make sure to share this episode with at least one friend or family member or whoever who may need it most. And also consider maybe leaving a, a written review and a rating. 
and to sign up for our newsletter at www.secretyogisociety.com. And like I said, you could respond to that um, email. So it's a, it's a reply email. So you could respond to that if you have any questions or maybe just DM myself on our Instagram or the Facebook page or wherever to get in touch. If you have any questions for myself or Kasha, you know where to reach her, go to her website or Instagram or her YouTube. And yeah, thank you. Thanks for everyone listening. Kasha, thanks so much for your time. And uh, I wish you the best on your continued travels. Hopefully you get to Australia soon. (laughs) Thank you for reaching out too. And thanks everyone for listening. Bye. Awesome. Yeah, thank you.